anyone doesn't know me here? Just skip that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I think the presentation uh, title that you got in uh, in the middle was something like Angular today and tomorrow or present the future or something like that. The main reason I'm giving this presentation is that uh, a few people were talking to me about how I'm due for talking uh, here and I was thinking of a low friction, low risk presentation to talk about. And this is pretty much the only thing I, I, I kind of know to talk about. So that was very easy. So um, it's, uh, to give some context about what we're going to talk about, there was AngularJS. Many people were loving it as a uh, JavaScript library for easing you know, working with all the jQuery crap. And in October, there was uh, AngularJS 1.3. And this was one of the interesting milestones for AngularJS because it fixed some of the key areas of suffering for, uh, for people, uh, mainly around forms, especially like the, you, you would easily get a form where you have a textbook binding to some paragraph and you're having fun, but once you start getting very complex forms with uh, lots of validations and uh, lots of interactions going, like autocomplete, all this sort of stuff. Angular starts to like, you can do stuff, but you, you get into very, very um, advanced stuff around creating directives and this sort of thing. So they actually fixed it, this, and they also gave you some very, very nice impro performance improvements that if you just take off your Angular 1.2 and put Angular 1.3, it, it just goes to your application faster. And I mean, Two areas they were working around were like memory optimizations and DOM operations optimizations under the hood with a built-in directive. However, they also dropped IE support to be able to do some of the performance optimizations they did. And only this was enough for people to panic, even though like Angular 1.3 is awesome. I I did panic when, you know, uh, the, the, like 1.3 was in beta and like there were very very good betas except I couldn't use them in, in my current project because I had to support IE 8 and luckily it, it had a short life so I could use uh, 1.2. So as people were you know trying to think about the benefits versus the challenges of you know going to Angular 1.3 and just like nine days after there was NG Europe, which was a, a very big conference in Paris for AngularJS. Most of the presentations were delivered by AngularJS team themselves. And then they started talking about this thing called Angular 2. That's like, if you uh, notice the date on the other ones, that's, that's only nine days after Angular 1.3. So that's how they presented it. They said, okay, you know, in Angular. 1.x, you have controllers, no, you create directives, you have, you know, compile function, link function, scope, all this stuff, which turned out to have a name, in fact, which I didn't know before in Europe, it's called directive definition object, that's the thing that has compile and link and all these weird things, so they said, yeah, we're killing that, and that's because we're killing scope, we are killing the current module system, and we're getting rid of GQLite, which is a very compact version of uh, jQuery that they have between. So people are like, okay, so what exactly is going to remain from Angular? Like if you're taking all of this, then it, it's just like having a new completely different library with just the same name. And what does it mean for me using Ang Angular 1.3? Like should I even be considering it? Should I even be considering Angular? So. What, what they said was something like, well, don't worry, Angular 2 will not be there until end of 2015, and when Angular 2 goes out, we'll be supporting Angular 1.x, whatever version that will be, for 1.5 to 3 years, officially. Well, people thought that this means that Angular 1.3 will be supported for only 1.5 to 2 years from now, or from October. and this contributed to the panic. And then there was more, because why did they build, like why did they kill all of this? It was all because they wanted to go uh, to ECMAScript 6. So instead of having a directive and the controller, they thought we will just have two kinds of classes. And that's because ECMAScript 6 allows them to have classes. So they said, okay, we will just have 
class of t and depending on what the class like wh what you want to do you can like the directive itself can be a controller and this is this is today a reality because uh, every directive can have its own controller and then they thought okay how do you differentiate between these different classes how do you how do we tell if you want a service what kind of service do you want because they now if we're going to use standard class syntax you won't have this annotation that tells you the name of the function and then they thought okay who this sounds like a problem that we have in java and everywhere like if if we just want a nice dependency injection model and we want to understand the types of the classes then who offers static typing guess what typescript so typescript was quite a surprise to people who were mostly outside of the microsoft umbrella if you may However, there was even another one. They said, okay, you know what? TypeScript is not enough, so we'll just get another language and we'll call it AppScript. And then people just freaked out. Do I need a whole new language to just use a, 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 you know, a JavaScript framework? It, it, it's just nonsense. And that, that's pretty much what the presentation is about, talking about this panic and how much of it is valid and how much is not, more on the not side. This is one of two slides I'm going to apologize to you about because I just couldn't do any better. So if you've seen here what AppScript does and what ECMAScript does, all I want you to see is that there is a class and then there are, guess what, in C Sharp, attributes. So that's, that's, that's how they, they wanted it to be. They're obviously very Java-oriented people and it's not, and like the, you know, when, the Ruby people wanted JavaScript to be like Ruby, they created CoffeeScript. When the Java people inside Google wanted JavaScript to be like Java, they created Dart. And actually the Angular team tried to push Dart on the people earlier in NGConf a year ago, but the community was just so clear in, no. No, we, we, we don't want to use Dart. If you, if, if you guys are going to push Dart strongly into AngularJS, tell us from now so that we stop using it. So instead of having Dart, they said, okay, we'll have TypeScript and we will add attributes to it. And so the, the main thing about AppScript is just attributes. And you would think, okay, so does this mean that I have to write my applications in AppScript to have uh, like a reasonable development experience with, with Angular? Because even if you can write JavaScript, if it is not optimal, if it is not easy, if it is not the path they want you to do, then it's pointless. You're just, like, instead of using the framework to make your job easier, you're just making it harder for yourself. Turns out what not many people know, you're one of very few people who are going to know about it now, is that the whole attribute thing, what they do really, is just set properties on the classes. Really, that's like if you are going to write it in just pure JavaScript, that's what it is. And if you know Angular a little bit well, you know that actually this style exists today. If you know when you are creating controllers and you are injecting stuff into it, there is this special property dollar $inject that you can throw things inside. So they are just taking the same model with the, like, you know, you are just making it more ECMAScript 6 compatible. Like, there isn't much really, and this is one side of the panic. That was not enough for people to get surprises. So, <laughs> what they had, they said, okay, we are also going, because we want to be web components friendly, we will stop using the way we do directives, and we will use this very funky syntax to define our directive attributes and values and all of this stuff. And people were like, this is ugly. And it is. <laughs> so the, the thing is, it, it is very ugly. It doesn't look like anything you did in JavaScript. Like even ng stuff, it's still like you know, just normal attributes. But this, no. So actually, what people don't realize is that this is not final. There is um, a very active issue on their GitHub repo where they want to change it. They don't want that syntax. Here's what they want. For security and being able to parse things easily and not have to worry about syntax, they don't want any uh, custom Angular templates inside. For example, let's say ng repeat, they don't want you to say uh, item in list because that's not JavaScript. 
And that's why they had to come up with this ugly thing, because if, if you are writing in gRebeat, you want to give uh, an identifier to a thing that you can use inside the repeater. So all they want is they just, they just want a way, and you can contribute to this and tell them a better way. They just want a way to have the value be just JavaScript, being able to define variables in, in, in the middle. And the other thing is they want syntax that web components will pass without trying to touch it. So they want to be web components friendly. So the main reason that they're doing this is that they were thinking, what is the craziest idea that is valid HTML, and because it's crazy enough, web components will just ignore it. And, and this, is, this is why this exists today, and they're, like, they're happy for anyone to give a better alternative if it matches. I think they have like a list of criteria that they want. Like, but in, to, to summarize, it just needs to be ignored by web components, allow them to write just um, JavaScript expressions, and write templates and stuff like this. So people still get, get panic about this a lot. However, when you think about it, we just want to be kind of future-proof, if you may. And that was, like, you can imagine people who attended this conference, or even people who were just watching off Twitter and seeing all the, oh, crap, no, this doesn't work. I, I was following that hashtag, and it was painful. Like, it was late at night our time, and it, it wasn't good. So, um, actually, what's, what's going to happen, as I said, like, when you think about most of the, the things that they, they, they brought up, it's, it's not that bad in terms of classes. It's not too hard to write um, the normal JavaScript if you want. Uh, if, it, like, when, uh, when, and when it comes to the migration story, they actually do have a migration story, and they are now still working on... Uh, skip that, I didn't say anything. It's just one of these moments. So, uh, actually, the migration story, but what people were worried about is that Angular 2 would be very different from Angular 1, that there would be no migration story and they have to rewrite the application. And it doesn't make sense to write an in, in one way today and completely change it next year. So, going with that, people were thinking, like, should I use um, 1.3 or not? And they were thinking that it's completely dead and this sort of stuff. Until uh, what, again, people don't know, although it's publicly available, is there are some design documents and some weekly meetings that happen, and, and all the notes for the meeting are available in Google Drive for anyone to read. And they're actually having a dedicated team for Angular 1.3, and this team is working actively. So from mid-October to today, there were six releases, and they're having very interesting fixes and features and uh, stuff. When I, when I presented this in NG Sydney, the Angular uh, JS Sydney last week, this was number five. So there, like, there is quite active development on, on this. And if you follow the, if you follow the um, documents about their weekly meetings and stuff, you will know that they're actually working on Angular 1.4, like a big milestone to come in, in there. And because people are not sure whether like, um, Google is going to have a bit of commitment to Angular 1.x or not, some things to know about this is that there are, although there are not many public-facing AngularJS applications from Google, which has always been a weakness, inside Google it, itself there are like 1,600 applications plus using different versions of Angular 1. Point, like one, from 1.1 1 .1 to 1.3. <laughs> So, like, you know, even for Google, it, like, it is an investment that they, they, they don't want to lose. And also, even for future, there are some projects that really depend on Angular 1 going forward. So they're having this Angular material thing, which is something like WinJS, if you think about it, and Twitter Bootstrap at the same time. So it's like, you know, they won't have one um, design standards for mobile, for web, for, for anything, and make it be their, their tool. And the way they are building it is as Polymer components, which is like a polyfill for web components, with um, AngularJS. And because they want this to ship very early, like there, I think there is a current beta now, and they want to ship it in early 2015, they just can't wait for Angular 2. So it's 
Now, here, and, and that's, that's kind of big for, for uh, um, Google. This means that I have uh, how much? One minute. One minute, okay. You're also working on uh, a new uh, router that shows a very interesting thing that it's going to work with Angular 1 and Angular 2 at the same time. So this tells you that there will be some gray area in between. The guy who was working on the router has left, but they're giving it to one of the strongest guys in the team, or at least one of the most well-known guys now. So it's still going on. And the other thing that scared people was that the, the, there was no migration strategy and uh, the team didn't talk about it and, and like, didn't say anything about it completely. But they, they showed up on several podcasts after all and they just said there was no migration strategy, there is no migration tool just because AngularJS 2 is not there yet. We don't know how Angular 2 would be like. I talked about how the HTML syntax and stuff. When we get to know what Angular 2 would be like, then we can talk about how to get there from the current Angular. So, uh, so probably we'll not be able to talk about this, but obviously you either choose to use Angular or use something else. <laughs> React seems quite crazy in what they do because they have all these other languages and stuff. Ember is quite close to the thing, but it's interesting that Re React seems to be winning. Uh, so now presentation is actually quite complete. That's it. Thank you. Bye bye. But, but one one last request. It's not part of the presentation, really. Please come and talk to Indy Sydney. And one last last thing. Everyone, do you have a mobile phone? Please pull it up now. Please. No, no, pull it up. I'm serious. And go to this. And please tweet about my newsletter. <laughs> now, no, no, no. Before I go, so show hands up when you when you do. I'm waiting. <laughs>